Special. I fucking love it's it. the beginning of something. Oh. It is the beginning of <laughs> the So yeah, we are doing a monthly episode of Worst Movies on YouTube that's oh. totally dedicated to the cult of Koontz. The cult of Koontz. It's like Conan. And Ron Koontz never disappoints. Dude, I love this guy. You know, I love him. I love his brother. I love all the <laughs> shitty actors. I just, I fucking love it. You know? Yeah. You're like, dude, his, just just everything. his world fascinates me. Yeah, dude, you know? I am totally intrigued with this dude's world. It's like, I want to, well, whatever. We'll get into it because we learned, we see more of Ron Coon's world. We saw the Western Ron Coon's world. This is the modern day Ron Coon's world. Right. We are doing the organization. The organization. It's like a mob movie. If no, it was, is it? If it was take, um, uh, if it was taking place in the Laurel Mountains. But is it Tim. really? Because I don't know what the fuck it is. It's a Ron Coots movie and the plot's so fucking... I don't know exactly what the fuck's going on. What state is he... Where is he at? I don't fucking know. Kentucky, maybe, is I it think. Kentucky? I don't know. I had a buddy who lives in Kentucky. I would have him track Good for you. I'm like, I'm like, hey, fine, Ron Coots. <laughs> Bring him to me. So let's just get this started, right? So we have Ron, the wonderful, the thunder kicking, thunder the kicking. fucking badass yes. motherfucking Ron Coots here. He's just in front of a blank wall talking. Yeah. So here. There's only one problem. He didn't send enough at me. And now the title and credits come up around him. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And of course, it's starring, written, directed, lit, painted, built, everything, you know. <laughs> well, except Ronald for Cruz. digital editing by that fucking guy. Oh, yeah, well, okay. He added somebody else. That's good. <laughs> for you a minute, take some yeah. of the pressure off, Ron. You can't do it all yourself. <laughs> Holy shit. And now this is where the movie starts turning amazing, like all Ron Coots oh movies do. It goes to him thunder kicking thunder kick. this dude, and he fucking turns into a movie <laughs> filmed on Ron's TV, falling onto the couch or whatever. Oh and God. then Ron shaking and punching a wig. And then the dude fucking flying out the fucking window. When he first reacted, it was just like, he was like, ah, he spazzed. You know? And all of a sudden some dude went out the window. You're like, whoa, what just happened? And all of a sudden he grabs a wig and he's like, rah, 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 with his face is. And you're like, what the fuck's happening? But I love it. Oh, I love it. And then, I, dude, him putting his fucking face. Well, we're getting there because oh. it cuts to now this, like, jail guard from some other fucking movie. And credits are still rolling. You know, right, hey, right. Vernon's in it. Hey. Gotta love Vernon. Oh, you gotta love fucking Vernon. It's so, not your fault, Chandler. And then it cuts to this shot of Rod Coots behind bars. Now, I'm not making fun of like, it, but people, hopefully people don't get that. I'm like making fun of, of the way Southerners talk. You know, because I got friends and stuff. And my family, oh, of course you. You ain't got nothing. I got people. You ain't got no people. I got one person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I just, I don't, I'm not making it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> what was I even fucking saying? I don't know, I'm just trying to explain my cock away. And now, it's a martial arts movie behind bars. Yes, he's Jackie Coons. <laughs> <laughs> because his head is over top of some guy that fucking kicks this other guy. Yeah, Breeze, Br Breeze, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce, uh, blah. I Bruce Coons. Uh, Bruce Coons. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> guards kinda freak out, I guess, and then it cuts to... What does it cut to? It was, like, shadowy, you know what I mean? It looked like two dudes rolling a cart down a hallway, but they were totally, like, you couldn't, they weren't lit at all. Well, somebody was shooting, and other people were just randomly screaming. I'm not really sure what it was. I don't about. think we were watching the same movie here, man. Really? Yeah. Well, what the hell was that? It looked like I, they were in, like, a... 
I the th- hallway. Yeah, well, there was that. But whatever, it doesn't fucking matter because it cuts to Ron Coots here in a park talking to a dude on a park bench. Having a nice conversation. Well, this conversation. Well, Mr. Williams, um, I just want you to know that I think of you as a friend, and uh, I'm glad that you're concerned about me. That you put others before yourself. I thank you for your interest, your prayers, your friendship, and um, everything that you've done. And now we get them walking and still having this conversation with the geese. He's like Steven Seagal kids. Always like they both have horrible fucking wigs. You know what I mean? Both out of shape. Actually, I think Ron Coons is in better shape, but he's got bitch titties. Like he's Steven seriously Seagal's got, got bitch titties. They both got bitch titties. Like. Steven Seagal got more like buffalo chunky Well, anyway, titties. we can get into <laughs> Ron Coons' titties fucking later. Oh, uh, again, we, we want to motorboat his titties. But anyway, so we cut to Vernon here talking to this guy. He's the sheriff or something. It really doesn't, it doesn't fucking really matter. matter. But yeah, here, but here's some. Yeah, Vernon. go on, Vernon. Go for it, Vernon. The spotlight's on you. Sheriff, this is Sergeant John Ryder. I heard a lot about him. He's one of those military guys. Yes, he has quite a record. He served three tours in Vietnam. Mm. Worked his all way, all way up to Master Sergeant before retiring. <laughs> There's no such thing as retirement. We're really glad to have you with us. I love it. Sometimes he looks at the camera and shit, or like he was just staring into the camera and he had like this smile on his face and he was like, oh, okay, we're going now. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get into that part too. No, that happened though. I know, but we'll get into that because. Why did that happen there? No. No, no. And then we get this scene with no lines. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna sit here and watch this. Fucking awesome. So nobody's gonna say a word, huh? <laughs> Still nothing. Nothing. So Vernon tells dude about bank robbery and here. Sure. The branch bank on Baker Avenue's been robbed. The bank robber took off, took refuge in a housing project, and has got some victims. Let's go. We gotta get with our men. Let's hit it. Gotta bring this guy in alive. Oh yeah, we don't get to see that bank robbery because it cuts right back to Vernon and they're talking about how they just did a good job ending or stopping uh, said he, bank robbery. He, yeah, he was like, oh no, there's a bank robbery. And he comes back and he's like, that was a good job you did. And he's yeah. like, wait a minute, what the fuck happened? Did we miss that? <laughs> but here. Sure, if I give you a good compliment on bringing that man in. Now I was out there with you. You've done a fine job. Well, I think my men deserve the credit for bringing this guy in. He's a good representative of the law in this community. He done a great job. So, I mean, with all like the action badass scenes that Ron Cooch puts in his movies, man, he didn't put that in. It was a shame. That could have been the climax. So blah blah fucking blah, Ron is now in this weird fence room, you know, that has all the fencing everywhere. Yeah. And Vernon and other people are there. <laughs> There's just and he's, wood pallets just hanging up on the, on the And he's everywhere. talking about, you know, coming back from Nam and having all the fucking problem with the president. Well, here. Well, yes, I know that uh, you left Nam three months before I did, and you just count me going to DI school, but... Well, when I got out, I just wanted to live my own life. And well, I can understand that, Ron. Uh, I can imagine when you get off that plane and face all those demonstrators, it may have hit you the wrong way. Uh, but we all have to live our own lives. Well, I'm sure it hit a lot of people the wrong way, but, you know, it never really bothered me all that much. I was just so glad to make it back that I'd care less what they said. Then as time went by, I thought about the men and women that died over there. The ones that came back crippled. Their families. I feel they deserve more. I agree with you. I can't argue with that, Ron. So is that what happened to Ron Coons? He went to Nam and like a bomb went off and now he's got a metal plate in his head and he just makes weird Hey, that's, that's mean, <laughs> man. Ron Coons That's is why awesome. he has to wear that ridiculous wig because his plate's actually showing. Well, like Chop Top from Texas Chainsaw so Massacre yeah, too. Yeah, dude, that'd be sweet. You're my fave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it is! It is! <laughs> anyway, we uh, thought it was played by Bill Bosley. Chop Top was not played by Bill Bosley. He was played by Ron Coons. Coons. Oh, good job, man. So now we cut to this strange guy that's our bad guy that uh, does yeah. not enunciate what he talks. He's kind of like Bird during these reviews. 
And he's talking to this dude in a bar? I guess. It looked like a like a set. Like Robert yeah. Coons actually had a set. But, but it I was not a it. set. Yeah, it, it was, was it was like the one side of the VFW or but something. They, he had to get such a far shot, and obviously he doesn't have a boom mic or nothing. So yeah. this guy was just like. Yeah. So this conversation happens. You killed a man a while back. You were tried. You served a few years. That man, he can't go back to his family. He is still in his grave. He'll never go home again because of you, Mr. Johnson. You think going straight and letting you go like that will just let everything go rosy? No, Mr. Johnson. I'm afraid it doesn't set too well with me. And then he shoots the guy off screen. <laughs> But, like, that was a great gun because it had no muzzle flash or nothing. It was just like, bang, bang. I love that the one dude, the shorter guy that he was talking to with the baseball cap, <laughs> I love that his gun was longer than he was. <laughs> <laughs> but then anyway, right, so strange bad guy here wipes down the gun, right, to wipe the fingerprints right, off, right. but sets it on the mantle with his bare hand. <laughs> yeah. You can't blame him. <laughs> He's not too bright. <laughs> So now we cut to Ron, talking to the camera, giving plot. Yes. Officer Johnson, a lawman. He's the only saved when I witnessed that murder. He's been shot and killed, and I personally feel there's one of Frank's hit men that got it. Now I've talked with Army Sergeant Riker. He encouraged me to take plenty of gear and camp out in a wooded area until he work something out. He taught me survival cleaning. And he just feels if I'm attacking that area, I will hold the upper hand. But he's not talking Ron. to the camera. No, he's, he's, not is, a he's actually talking to this kind of chubby dude. And I think the dude's writing a book about Ron Coon's life or something. I don't know fucking know. Was it? This wasn't at the bar, was it? No, this no. was in that pallet room, <laughs> but the other side of it, but it wasn't supposed to be. It was Well, there was a, a couple of chubby dudes, so which, <laughs> yeah. which chubby dudes? It doesn't fucking matter. Moving on. So now we cut to what I thought was Iron Sheriff for a second, but it's, no, it's Tracker Ron. When Ron needs to be a tracker, this is what he fucking wears. So we cut to him running in the woods this and is... taking out dude. Dude, he took him out epically, man. Oh, and then he runs again. He did like a... a takes th out this fucking guy. He did like a Shawn Michaels sex scene. And then runs. <laughs> and then takes out this fucking guy. Jeez. Oh, fuck. And one of the one thing he's running and we're just like, whoop, 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 whoop. And I was like, got shared. Shared. Karen shaped titties. <laughs> but yeah, he did a fucking uh, a Ron... Fucking Shawn Michaels, sexy boy. Fuck, he jumps up, he's just like, brute, and then drops. Like, blah. I wonder if he heard his back doing one of those. But anyway, we cut to Vernon here looking oh. directly into the camera and laughing like you were talking about <laughs> earlier. Yeah. And then now he starts his lines. Oh, shit, I gotta go. Oh, whatever. You know, he was having fun with it. Who gives a shit? He was probably laughing at Ron. Like, you, you actually taking this serious? I wonder if Ron ever, like, yells at them or whatever. You know, he's like, No, cop! Not the way I told you to do it. I told you to do it slower and stupider. So now we cut to <laughs> the strange bad guy pulling up in this place in a truck. He gets out of the truck and fights these two fucking guys. You have two questions. You've had enough. You won't rest. <laughs> Just gets back in the fucking truck and leaves. What was he there for a point or was he I just know, that, there to pull in, fight, and then leave? Was he not even part of it? He just got out and beat him up and then left, you know. What was with the like the long pausing, the uncomfortable staring at each other thing? That's just a Ron Koontz movie. Dude, I fucking love that. They're just yeah. they're like and you can hear like the, 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 the his hand on the yeah, camera. Yeah, the hand on the camera, you know, because back then you could if you yeah. moved that fucking camera you were hurt like <laughs> That's all you heard. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and sadly, he's still using the same one, I swear. 
probably like 1989, 90, like when they first came out with them camcorders, you know what I mean? You barely touched it. So anyway, we cut back to Fence Room, and Ron and people were sitting there talking, and they're talking about Ron's military career and whatnot, so you're... Oh, he's fucking John let's Rambo. Let's listen to this. He's John Coots Rambo. Well, what about Officer Riker? What do you think? Well, he's doing a good job in the streets. Other than that, maybe he's a little gung-ho. Well, you know, he's got an excellent military record. He's put in that military experience to good use. Yeah, he's got 30 years of military experience and doing a good job at it. Well, that's what we need. You're right. And blah, blah, fucking blah. We have Ron here, and he's talking about quitting his county surveyor job. He was a county surveyor? Right. Were you, Ron? I've talked with Mo Armour Sergeant Riker. Well, he's encouraged me to join his trust patrol. He said that I have the letter of law on my side and I'd be right on top of the information. Besides, this job is a uh, county surveyor. It's just not working out for me. Apparently he was. It's too hard. But okay, here's something that was strange that really doesn't even matter plot-wise, but what's up with this guy, this old guy in the background, just <laughs> boy yeah. What the fuck? What, what the fuck is that? What is he doing? There's a wall right here, and there's a wall right there, and there's a wall right there, and look, there's a four, and there's another wall. And you're like, what? Yeah, he did it for a straight minute. And now after that, it's time for a country song with Why the not? oldest band on the planet. So let's hear us some old time country. Some fucking major old time country. He ran up on the lake across the ravine. Past the Indian ruin of that in this I stopped for a while. I was bone tired and I guess that I started to so now we cut to Ron and this guy it. having this conversation, it. right? So they're having a conversation about how the cops, they're not doing a good job, but I think I can. Anyway, here, <laughs> let's hear it. I know his hangouts, I know his behavior. I know the type of people that he likes to hang around. And I just feel, even though law enforcement uh, hasn't got to the bottom of it, I, I feel that I can. Well, kind of seems that you've been doing a pretty good job so far. Uh, if you could just now find out where he's, where he's went, and uh, maybe you can kind of bring him back, bring him back home. I don't think you could do it as bad. You know, it's just... I, um, my voice is more, I was doing more kind of Vernon oh, yeah. than Ron, but... Yeah, I just, I love the singer. When they cut back to the singer and shit, he was just like, he looked like he was literally dying at the mic. Well, we really do, because, yeah, we cut back to the band, and now it's time for more country song. Here. We sing the song, we sing the song, all that is, all that is, come bearing corn, bearing corn, water and water and water, stop and be, stop and be. serious band. I mean, the girl in the back, she looked like she was petrified. What the fuck was with the fact that there was one young a white girl? It doesn't really matter. She's Everybody white. in Ron Coon's like, world is white. white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, yeah, there is one young girl and everybody else is a thousand years old except for the stand-up bass player. He was kind of younger. Yeah. Not young, but Kind of. Well, he was younger than Methuselah. He, there. Was, he was only 85 compared to everybody <laughs> else's 195. Well, anyway, we, times. we now cut to Ron and Vernon having a scene together, so let's bask in the warm glow of that the is the, the Dawson Toads of the Coons Brothers. The Dawson Toads? <laughs> I don't think it's investigator no more than it is in yourselves. I think it's a hit man working for Frank. I've got information that he is in Tennessee right now. But he's there for a reason. I say that he'll be back. 
Dude, I love Ron Coons. So now we cut to the strange bad guy Dude. in the woods shooting somebody. Did we, Whoever the fuck it was, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. Did we talk about it when he walked at the camera and he's like, uh, No, because we didn't get that far oh, that's yet. Right. But I, no, I thought he did that at the beginning. He did right? that at the end. No, he did that in the fucking Cult of Coons intro, yeah. but he didn't do that in the beginning. Oh, okay. So now we cut back to Ron and he's saying that strange bad guy's coming for him and we get this fucking speech. I just feel that this man is going to be coming after me because I know too much old Frank. I feel that he'll be coming after me. What it is, I'm a law now. I've got a gun. I've got a badge. And I've got the letter of the law on my side. If it comes out to me, I'm going to deal with this man on his own terms. Oh, so wonderful. <sighs> can't get enough, can't get enough of that Ronald Coon. So now we cut the strange bad guy at the bar that he was in earlier, and, you know, he says all of this, which is really hard to fucking hear, but he does say all of this. I know you're fast on the draw. Have you ever really been up against a man who can really use a gun? I don't think you have. You gotta get him close. So close you can't miss him. Well, we, he saw Ronald Coons, his rival. He was a... But we don't! What? We, well, don't, we don't see him, no. But not for a fucking second! But I like when he just stood up and was just going... And the dudes in the next chairs were just got up and just kind of like... Well, and Vernon was kind of the standard, like... <laughs> yeah, I, think, I don't think Vernon knew they were acting. I think he thought this was real going on. <laughs> That's why he looked like this. He looks like fucking Trout. <laughs> so That's whatever. So whatever, whatever. Ron says this. Well, uh... I'm going to start walking, and when I get in close, I'm going to start shooting. Ed keeps walking. No, Ron. Stop, Ron. Stop it. Stop, Ron. Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. Dude. Fuck. <laughs> I think I saw into Ron's oh. fucking soul there for a second. Yeah, because he's like, I'm going to keep walking, and I'm not going to stop. Until my eyeball rubs up against the land. <laughs> <laughs> so Ron shoots strange looking bad guy. Awkwardly. And then he has this awesome, awesome death scene. <laughs> uh, he, he crushes the can. <laughs> and he's just like, Dah! and then he hits the ground. He's like, Dah! So Ron and Vernon walk up and look at his corpse for a second, and then they leave. Yeah, he had to do it, Chandler. And now we cut to the fucking fence room again, and <laughs> the, all these guys are having this conversation. An excellent job bringing this man in alive. It's a wonder you didn't get shot yourself. Thank you. Uh, I knew he had an automatic rifle, and it would take him time to assemble it. So I used hand-to-hand -hand combat on him. How did you know that Mr. Henderson was the target? Well, I've been chasing him for a long time, and if I had caught him sooner, we wouldn't have had this problem. And while this is going on, their wives are in the background silently mocking them. I know, like... You believe they're this stupid to make this film? <laughs> Why would Rod even cut back to them? And I don't know, maybe he didn't... Like, maybe, he, 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 maybe, see his way? <laughs> maybe he didn't know that they were talking shit. I knew it. I knew it too. <laughs> but maybe Ron don't know. So anyway, now we cut back to Ron and he's talking with this guy who's, you know, writing the book on him or whatever. And then Ron says this. The guards are here for my protection too. I just want to make sure that I get to that courthouse to uh, testify against Frank. That's possible because my army sergeant Riker apprehended the sniper. He was trying to kill Mr. Henderson because Mr. Henderson got involved with Frank in an organization which led to drugs. And sometimes drugs uh, create murder. 
Let's welcome him to test Vargas Frank. What I'm saying is I want to thank you very much for being my security guard and I wish you the very best with your book. He gets up, goes to the door, credits roll. Well, the guards are waiting. Dude, there was at one point where he got up and walked like toward the shut off the camera, you know, after yeah. the conversation. That was fucking. Yeah, that awesome. was earlier. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a movie. You know what he hasn't done yet, really? He or, hasn't done no. He hasn't done a romance. So I'm gonna make Fifty Shades of Plaid, <laughs> starring Ron Coons. Fifty Shades of Coons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fifty Shades of Coons. <laughs> Who are we gonna get to be the woman though? I don't know that. Vernon. The female, <laughs> female <laughs> Shep Howard. <laughs> anyway, on that note, for Barry Gutter, oh. not only has this been another one of the worst movies on YouTube, it has been the first episode in the Cult of Coons. Oh, we'll see God. you next week for YouTube. <laughs> we'll see you next month for the oh. next Call to Coons. Oh, dude, I fucking love Ronald Coons. Let's go kidnap his ass before it's him to make movies. No, nah, dude, I want to do the Johnny Depp, like Johnny Depp did with Hunter S. Thompson, but I don't want to do it for months like he did. I want to go to wherever the fuck he is and then, you know, just live in his like world for basement. like, yeah, for like a weekend. You want to live? I in want to experience Ron Koontz's fucking world. You want to live in his single wide for about a month? <laughs> no, for like a weekend. For a weekend. That's right. it. Are you sure? I think you should go a whole month. No. To get the whole experience. I don't want to After be you're done him. You won't be able I to just stop talking like a thief. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to experience his world. It's not your fault, Chuck. You had to sleep with him. <laughs> sleep with them? Yeah. That'll happen. No, no, it won't happen. You, Never. You love Ron Coons. I do love Ron Coons, but there is no penetration of any sorts going on at all. I don't know, I think you find him in his Bette Midler wig fucking sexy. Hey, Ron. Um, I understand that you turned down working on the Sheriff's Patrol. Well, yes, uh, I chose not to. You chose not to? How come? Well, I've got enough work to do as it is. I just feel that I'll be getting into a whole lot more than I'll be able to do. I know you've been um, spreading yourself thin lately. You really have. <laughs> Gets out of truck and fights these two fucking guys. Gets out of truck? Oh, <laughs> good grammar. Gets out of truck. Well, Mr. Sloan, you should have got a gun that didn't jam. Nope, 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 nope. You all right, man. Uh. I just farted for like six yeah, seconds. Yeah, and straight. that's right in the middle of the review, so that's half. Oh, there's Bask of the Ambience. Oh, they'd be. No, they kicked me out. Because <laughs> I like to touch everybody's genitals in the shower. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ron Coop's probably. And Ron Coop's a badass. He don't touch genitals, he cuts them off. <laughs>